second video I prepare for unit 5 marketing. In this video, I will explain about creative content. So for creative content, we are looking at the content that we prepare for marketing, which are photo, video, copywriting, and call to action. We will look at this one by one. Let's start with creative photography. Creative photography is to prepare beautiful and nice photograph to show in our marketing promotion. So to prepare that, remember, we have to make sure that the image, the photo that we prepare must be unique and original. The picture that we show must present some clear message to the audience. It must be beautiful and elegant and the photo must be able to tell a story or a message to the audience. So I have some tips to take photo here. First, we have to ensure that the background is suitable for that product so that it will show the product. And then the lighting must be suitable, trying to make sure we have good lighting when we are taking the photo. And the props must be suitable and last, we have to follow the rule of third composition. So let's look at the example of a background. You can see I have four photo here. One of the photo they have a back black background, and you can see that uh, it's uh, not that suitable for this product because it's too black. And for our for this photo, you can see that is a clear background, but the bottle is also white color, so it doesn't really show the product itself. Okay. Well, for this one, uh, people, my question is the the focus of the image is that. Is it the cup or the, the macaron that we want to show? So we have to ensure that the background of the photograph is really suitable so that the product is uh, being easily seen. Okay, it will be become the spotlight. The product become the spotlight, not the background. Next, like I say the for the lighting very important. So we have to ensure that we have enough lighting when we take picture. Of course, you if you are willing to invest for a good lighting for to take picture, that is good. But for students, if you do not have money to invest for that, actually you can try to borrow handphone from your friends and then you use few handphones as the lighting when you take the photo. If you have a very good result indeed and next we are looking at the rule of third composition when we take photo imagine that this photo is a landscape photo so we imagine that there are four lines okay four lines in the photo so to make it nine different areas so a good photo will ensure that the main image will be located in the intersect of the lines. Okay, intersect of the line. So you can see that this main is uh, located in the intersect of the line. So same thing with the bee and the, the animal here. So if let's say I have a background like this, then the first thing I have to do is I have to have the lines first, the four different lines. To divide it into nine areas before I put a certain image inside. So let's say if I want to put an, a rapid into this background, so first of all I have to think of this. Uh, I have to draw or I have to imagine there are four different lines here. Then only I put my rapid somewhere near the interception of the lines. So I can put my rapid somewhere near here. Okay, so it's uh, not in the center, but it's nearer to the intersection line. So it presents a nicer picture rather than I put my rabbit just in the center. Okay, next will be the prop. The prop also very important for us to prepare the photo. This photo is known as flat lay photo because the photo is taken from the top 90 degree. Okay, 90 degree. So we take the photo from the top and that's why we have to prepare the props but to make sure that the props doesn't catch the focus okay the important thing is the product itself not the props itself and after that we are looking at the creative photography 
For creative photography, there are a few tips that you can follow here. Okay. To create, to prepare creative photography, remember also the product must be original product that we take. Okay. Do not copy, but instead we can find inspiration for the, from the videos that prepare by our friends and always create a story before we we start to take the video so these are some of the tips first use the tripod to stabilize your shoot when you are taking the video and then this will make the video nicer find a setting that complements your product or suitable for your product and then add lighting like i say if you can't invest on a new uh, lighting then you can borrow handphone from your friends and use the lighting from the handphone to do the video, okay, to take the shoot. It will be very nice as well. Use a microphone to capture high quality sound and then add smooth movement to your shoot. So you have to prepare what are the movement you have to put in your shoot. Show your product in action and maybe you can take footstep and uh, you can take a few times and then choose the best one in your video. So these are some of the tips that uh, you can follow when you are preparing your own video. Next, we are looking at copywriting. Copywriting is the process of writing persuasive marketing text that sells your product or service and to motivate the prospect or the consumer to take action. There are three copywriting techniques you can make use. First is what we call teaser. Teaser is to give some sneak reviews to something new. Normally, we start by introducing a new product or a new service, even a new business that we are doing. And for soft sell, soft sell is to provide information, to share information before we are trying to sell. So soft sell can be used multiple times okay to consumer so that we can get consumer engagement consumer will like to see soft sell rather than hard sell because in soft sell we provide description of product or service we tell the benefits of using the product we also tell some tips of uh, the product and Normally, when we do soft sell, we do not mention the price. So we are trying to engage the customer, but we are not trying to push them to buy the product. But for hard sell, hard sell is we are trying to sell the product directly. So we will try to do some pushing, try to do some pushing to sell the product. However, this method is not recommend to use a too frequently, eh? we have to reduce the use of hard sell, but we have to use more soft sell. So in the hard sell, normally we have description of the product as well as we have um, mentioning the price of the product and we have contact number of the owner. Next, I have we'll show you some example of teaser, soft sell, and hard sell. Eh? So for teaser, for example, this is a type of teaser. Teaser with interesting um, title, for example, will tell you coming soon, uh, advantage coming to the way. You can also ask questions. Huh? So you can see here, we'll tell you uh, something is coming, but um, just very little detail about the product itself. But for us, but for soft sell, for soft sell, we will tell them uh, something about um, the product or we tell them some tips that will attract their attention for example what are the secret to having beautiful skin in just three days okay soft cell and i also have some hard cell hard cell you can see here the hard cell the hard cell is uh, for example uh, telling you I have this package what is the price so you can come to buy from me this package while we are preparing for short sale and hard sale remember we are always following a copywriting structure what we call AIDA AIDA structure AIDA stands 
from the word attention means that you give your headline or opening line some at some key words important terms to grab the attention and to engage the audience so that audience will like to read further next you will tell them some uh thing to to increase to generate their interest to know more and to hold the attention of the audience and to give them reason to continue to read for example you tell them um, the problems that they face is negatively affecting their lives so that you can do something to solve this problem and then next the desire is you give them some some offering that to help them okay to help them to solve their problems and then create their desire to know more even to create their desire to buy the product and last is to tell them to take action maybe you just tell them to like or share your your whatsapp or like or share your your things to the other people so let's look at the example of soft sell again so you can see this soft sell that is following this soft sell is following the ida technique with a uh, keywords or title to grab the attention of the audience after that um, something to to get the interest of the people to read some more and then to create the desire of the consumer by asking them whether they want healthy or good looking skin or not and last ask them to do something okay call to action i have another example of hard sell here Okay, similarly, you can see that similar. Hassel also using Aida technique by giving them um, some title as a headline and then description that create their interest to read further and then after that, some statement to increase their desire by saying, for example, with this supplement, say goodbye to your weight loss worry, something like that, and then ask them to take action. Here, you can see a big difference here. In hard sell, we will tell the price for the first, uh, for the, and we give them bonus, for example, for the first customer, for example, and do some action like, like our product. So by doing this, by doing this, actually, you are promoting the product and pushing them to buy. Okay, I have some more hard sell example. For example, here you can see uh, with the price showing that and then tell you when to buy and uh, when is it available, how to buy it, for example, and where to get the product. Okay, so you can see some difference here. So for soft sell, sometimes we just show some pictures relevant. For example, sell. Uh, Samsung Galaxy is showing this picture, but this picture is not the picture of the for the, the handphone itself, but it just show the quality of the photo taken with that handphone. But for Zarola, Zarola is showing all the photos, uh, photo of the product that they are selling. So you can buy directly this type of product from the website. Okay. So for copywriting, remember, for copywriting, you can use many different keywords to engage with the consumer and to trigger the emotion of the consumer. For example, you can use keywords like Baru, Proven, Premium, Advanced, Very Good, Convenient, Improved, Fresh, Guarantee, and Best. Okay. So when we are writing co copywriting, there are some tips for you. You can read here. First, remember the structure of copywriting. That is the AIDA structure. You can follow that. That is one of the methods. And then beside that, when you are doing copywriting, always remember who are your customers, the segmentation of the customers. After you remember, uh, refers to the customer, you know what the customer wanted. Then you write the the copywriting, the statement relevant with the customers, suitable with the audience. And then the copywriting techniques is must be the writing statement must be specific 
through the certain product or service supported with information and it must be appropriate suitable prevent from confusing the consumer the word must be suitable eh? if for example you use the term premium premium means that the product is more expensive higher price or the word exclusive means that um, the product has limited stock and uh, the product is going to sell out next these are the tips for copywriting you can see that in copywriting it might be different between product and service okay when we are doing copywriting remember there are few things that we always write we must have heading right so the heading of the product and service might be uh, normally similar but for certain things like uh, the offering that we make it might be different okay it might be different so we have to take note of what product we are selling before we determine how to write our copywriting next we have some template to help you to do the copywriting this template is provided to you okay just to prepare you before you start to write the copywriting so you have to think of what product are you selling who are the segment of the product what offer you can give to them what are the problem that you are trying to so any surprise bonus i can you give to them or not and before you start to write it down so these are the examples of preparation huh? you prepare by writing what are the main product okay and then you think of who are the main target customer first what are the free bonus you can give to them for example free thing uh, customer problem what problem you can solve any surprise bonus can you give and then how to launch them so these are preparing to help you to before you start to write okay you you prepare all this information before you start to write then it will be easier for you to write down okay beside copywriting also you have to uh, for certain certain uh, social media normally we have hashtag so we also add hashtag to copywriting sometimes okay especially if you are uh, you are trying to promote in uh, instagram hashtag is very important hashtag will help you to build up the brands get the new followers and help you to check and select your followers so how many hashtag is enough normally we will say about 11 to 20 hashtag not too many eh? not more than 30 and then try to make sure the hashtag is something that you need trading when it's trading people will go to search on it and it represents some general as well so the hashtag will help you to increase the likelihood of being featured in the social media after the copywriting now we are looking at the call to action so like i say in the copywriting the last part of copywriting is you try to call them to do some action so for example for facebook you can write copywriting like price basing on selling technique pm or sms for more information click the button for details bonus or guarantee while instagram you can encourage them to use hashtag hashtag is also one way to 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 encourage them to to do a tag action okay ask them to post or tag somebody else well for email marketing you can prepare them with a pop-up box for them to click okay or sidebar for them to click at the content or at the footer for them to click huh? you can see example here for facebook they provide some link for you to to click okay they will say go 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 come shop while the stock lasts okay so they are link for you to click okay so this is Excel with the call to action and uh, i have example in the email for example uh, pop up then for some button for you to click yes or no okay or sidebar for you to click give email and subscribe this is another button for you to click or 
to provide information, your email information to, to create and support. Let's say for now you already have your photography or video or copywriting or any other content prepared to post in the social media platform. So now you have to consider, are you going to post it organic or paid? Organic means you are going to use your existing network in the social media platform to promote your product. So you are promoting to people you know, such as your friends, your family and other people that who have connection with you through the online platform. But for pay, for pay, you are paying for the promotion. So you are using paid advertisements such as Facebook ad, Instagram ad, paid for the Google search to do the promotion. So which to choose is depends on a few things. First, whether you are willing to pay or do you have the budget to pay for the promotion. Second is what is your purpose of doing that promotion. So let's look at the benefits or difference between the two strategy. So for organic, it is free. So you do not need to pay any, to pay any kind of cost. However, you have a very low reach. You can reach to much lesser people. And then it is very important, however, to help to improve the online presence of your company and your service. And it will not really affect your reputation. However, for paid, you have to spend a huge amount of money to do the promotion. The good thing with paid advertisement is you can push your post to the rich target or audience. So it means that you can select which group of people you want to post your promotion to them. So you can choose who are the customers, younger adult or elder adult, who you want to choose to male or female. So here you can reach higher group of people and then increase the awareness of the product. So if you can pay for that advertisement, you can go for the paid advertisement in the social media. Next, we are going to look at what are the tools that you can use for designing the creative content. Of course, the most popular tool that we usually use today is the Canva. So it's very easy. You just sign up the Canva and you start to create. There are lots of templates in the Canva to help you to do the creation. Besides, there are also other software that you can compare or you can use to do the content creation, for example, Adopt Lightroom, okay, Adopt Spark and Quit. These are some of the software that you can use. And next, I have to explain to you also the licensed content. So for licensed content, it means that the photo or the video has created by somebody and is licensed. So you have to pay, you have to pay an amount of money to use that content in your marketing materials. So licensing allow you to use the content in your own promotion. If, if you didn't pay for the licensed content, then what happened is when you use the licensed content in your social media, then suddenly there will be a pop-up notification tell the user that you are using unlicensed content such as uh, some music or photo or video in that promotion. So it will affect your reputation as well. So you also can try to use open license content. So open license content is the content that freely available online and you can use it. Okay, you can use it. So sometimes you can see the terms like CCBY or CCBYSA. Later, I will explain in more detail on what to mean by CCBY. So this openly licensed content is appropriate. You can use to share on the social media platform. Okay, so you have to check first whether the content is free for you to use in your promotion or not. If you find that this content 
uh, for example the music the video or the photo is free to use then you can use it all right so sometimes you can uh, share user generate content okay sharing content is allowed if the platform allows sharing okay they allow sharing and allow you to repost or even allow you to change it so before reposting a photo seek permission from the creator user if they didn't mention whether this is open for you to share or not then you have to seek, seek the permission from the creator user and then you have to attribute the creator or user in your content sometimes when i download the music when i download the music from the web then the web will say okay please okay please attribute the creator or user in your content then after that in your youtube or when you use that music then you have to you you have to attribute to the creator so when you have your content on the social media channel such as instagram remember instagram terms of use operate to give the social media platform a non-exclusive fully paid and royalty free transferable sub license to use the content so instagram can license the image from the site to others okay so they can license the image they can use the image a lot people other people to use the image they follow without infringing copyright so most social media terms of service require a, a user either has on the copyright to their post content or has the right to use the content eh? how about youtube youtube has two choices given to you you can use either standard youtube license or ccl we call it ccl common creative license so for standard youtube license if you grant you a podcast right to the social media site okay you can refer to the terms uh, for details uh, and you can only be accessed from youtube for viewing purposes and cannot be reproduced or distributed you can redistribute with without the permission of the creator and people are not allowed to use the content for their own work unless they provide a link to the original content and the creator or the uploader of the original video has some rights that allow him to pro prohibit the reuse of his video particularly when the significant or final aims are changed however for ccl ccl normally give a standard way for a content creator to grant someone else permission to use their work for example if i upload my video my educational video in the youtube i use ccl i might allow people to use part of my video in their uh, post or whatever okay so older may have may use some portion of the work of the original author so we can give permission to edit recompile change or alter the original work except for few listed things so if you are giving ccl make sure that you you know you know uh, are you giving them the authority to use your work or not okay an original author will not be held responsible for any damages caused by the derivating work so what do we mean by ccl ccl is creative commons license so this is a public copyright license that enables the free distribution of a copyrighted picture video music template and even reading materials like journals articles kind of reading material so an author can decide to use ccl to give people the right to share use or modify the work that they have created you can see here there are seven licenses under here so the first one is public domain public domain means that you can copy and publish you do not need to attribute the author and can be used for commercial use can be modified and you can change the license okay then you have other ccl license here before we look at ccl license let's look at there are four conditions of ccl license first attribution meaning that do you need to attribute the author 
okay if you see by means that you have to attribute the order it means that if you use the music in your video clip then at the end of your video clip or like in the youtube you can write down underneath them in the message that attribute the music to which website or which owner who is the author of that uh, music or something huh? second condition is share a like can you share third non-commercial if you see this and see it means that it cannot be used for commercial purposes and fourth condition is no derivative works okay so you have four condition here let's look at the license one by one okay the first license ccby you can see that this is attribution only that means that you are required to attribute the name of the author or the creator and the content can be created or edited for commercial purposes can be used for commercial purposes and the second license ccbysasm you have attribution and content can be altered can be edited but but with specific limitation with some limitation eh? it can be used for social and commercial purposes it can be used for commercial purposes however if you see ccbynd nd means you cannot edit you have to attribute the creator you can use it but you cannot edit so you still can use this for commercial purposes that means that you can take the music from a website and can uh, with a ccp by nd license to use in your video you can use it for commercial purpose but you cannot edit the music you have to attribute the creator but you cannot change you cannot edit the music and next you can see that ccbync when we see the word nc it means that no commercial use so if you find a music with this license it means that the content can be changed can be modified but you cannot use it for commercial purposes let's say i take the music from the website and then i use it for my education purpose just to educate you or add in my education background uh, education uh, video clip background then i can use it eh? if you find a music with license for example cc by ncsa so the works may be outer change a little bit edit a little bit but with limitation you cannot use for commercial purposes if you find the license with cc by nc and nd it means that you cannot edit the content you cannot use it for commercial purposes still you have to attribute the creator so these are the license that you can use you can state in your music or under your photo or under the video that you create okay and you can allow them to take part of it so how are you going to license your content i it's up to you eh? up to you but uh if you don't want them to use it for commercial purposes make sure you put nc in the license okay so that's all for this uh, unit 5 thank you for watching and for my students Please answer the discussion questions in the Schoology. Thank you very much. Thank you.